tonight is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to rpm.espn.com. Today on Friday Night Fights, brought to you by Miller High Life, coming to you from Dakota Magic Casino and a Hotel in Hankinson, North Dakota, our main event. King Arthur Williams and O'Neill Bell in a 12-round cruiserweight battle. In the news, we'll hear from Sugar Ray Leonard and look back to his war with the hitman. And then we spin it forward to Francisco Bajado, one of the true rising superstars in the fight game. Would he keep his knockout string intact against Jesse Varela? And we'll look ahead to the cruiserweight bout between IBF champ Vasily Girov and one of the more exciting boxers on the planet, Julian Letterlow. Friday Night Fights right now. Welcome to Friday Night Fights. I'm David Lloyd, sitting next to Max Kellerman. My playbook, very simple this week. Just get out of the way and hand the ball to you. What have you done with Brian Kenny and Kevin Corfman? They're all gone. I'm filling in big time. Here we go. we got a fight tonight that we're pretty excited about. King Arthur Williams, maybe a little past his prime against O'Neill Bell. How do you see this one? Oh, it's a crossroads fight. Believe it or not, on Friday Night Fights, we have a crossroads fight this <laughs> week. But they are compelling for that reason. King Arthur Williams, a good contender for a number of years, won a title at Cruiserweight, lost it on Friday Night Fights, actually, in our second ever show in 98 to Amamu Mayfield, whose title ring was also short-lived. But Arthur Williams is a good fighter, certainly on the downside of his career. And O'Neill Bell we saw on Tuesday Night Fights over the summer in a very good fight against Jason Robinson. Bell won the fight. He's an up-and-coming contender. He's hungry. He's a good puncher. He's aggressive. This should be a good fight as long as it lasts. All right, we are looking forward to it. We send it now to Bob Papa and Teddy Atlas ringside. Thanks, David and Max. And we are in Hankinson, North Dakota. Cornfields every which way you turn, right on the border of South Dakota. We're a good 70-mile drive south of Fargo. And glad you can join us for Friday Night Fights. We are at the Dakota Magic Casino in Hankinson, the only game in town, literally. We have a 10-round junior middleweight showdown for you. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. Verno Phillips and Kasim Uma. 22-year-old Kasim Uma, born in Uganda, now fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida. 153 pounds, 12, 1-1, one one, with nine knockouts. We saw him in his last fight here on Friday Night Fights back on June the 29th. He won a dominant 10-round decision against Tony Marshall. 31-year-old Verno Phillips, coming off a 14-month, two-week layoff. 154 pounds out of Denver, Colorado. 31-8-1, 16 knockouts. He had a 29-month layoff. We saw him on this network knock out Julian Jackson way back in 1998. Legal problems, spent some time in jail, came back last June of 2000. So another long layoff for Verno Phillips. Gentlemen, Eddie Obregon, the referee. Are there any North the Dakota chief rules will be used for our first bout of the evening. They are as follows. Three knockdown rule in effect, so is the standing eight count. Fighter can be saved by the bell in the final round only. Referee or doctor may stop it. Accident from foul, they go to the scorecards after half the rounds are complete. That would be five. What a story, Kasim Uma, if you missed it the last time. He came to the U.S. in February of 1998. At the age of seven, while in Uganda, while in school, the Army came and basically abducted him for 10 years, saw his family only once, and realized, I have to escape this country. So he took up Taekwondo, but he realized that the Ugandan Taekwondo team never travels, so he became a boxer. And in 1998, when the Ugandan team was coming to the United States for a tournament, he landed at the Reagan-Washington International Airport, and he and several teammates started running literally for their lives. He has U.S. residency now, has a U.S. passport. He can travel. He wants to become a U.S. citizen. He has a four-year-old son back in Uganda that he has not seen since he left. And his parents are sick, and he wants to get them to the United States. An incredible story for the 22-year-old Kasim Uma in the red. And he's a nice young man. I talked to him yesterday. And he's a 22-year-old southpaw who I think is a very good prospect. Maybe somebody who's going to make noise in this division. 
He has his trainer, Johnny Bumpus, and talking with Johnny yesterday as he and Phillips trade a bit. He said the thing that gave Marshall so much trouble and the thing that will probably give Phillips trouble is, he said, Uma's a southpaw who likes to move to his left. Normally, southpaws like to go to their right to stay away from the right-hander's power. He goes to the left. That confuses the opposition. That's just a little extra problem that he brings to the table for an orthodox fighter matching up against the southpaw. Colonel Phillips has been in against a lot of talented people. Julio Vasquez, all the way back to 1991. Gianfranco Rossi. Been in against a lot of good competition, but it's a career that has been stalled with layoffs. Some inactivity, the feet got tied up there. Nice combination by Phillips on the inside. How quick the pace is, how close Uma stays early. To the older 31 year old Phillips may tell his fight. But Phillips is a little bit shop worn, but a very experienced fighter, as you mentioned. How will he stand up in a fast paced, hard paced fight? That is the question, the question that Uma is looking to answer. Phillips has been having a hard time getting fights. He said, when I was a top-ranked guy, my phone would always ring. Now it doesn't ring. Did some work with David Reed, Hector Camacho Jr. Worked a little with Vernon Forrest, J.C. Candelo. So he feels that he has gotten good work over these last 14 months, and he has had some very good moments in this final minute and a half of round one. Now Uma looks to trade. Uma with a shot combination. Phillips answers right back. Blistering pace to end round one. title is at stake O'Neal Bell defends his crown against the veteran King Arthur Williams glad you can join us from Hankinson North Dakota Bob Hopper along with Teddy Atlas Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Highlights Teddy in this fight the main event Williams uh, against O'Neal Bell normally each guy may have a say in how the fight unfolds but you think it might not pan out that way I think so I think that maybe this time it's more in the hands of one guy. That one guy, the more experienced Arthur Williams, because Arthur Williams is a guy that is just more polished, more experienced than O'Neal Bell, taking nothing away from O'Neal Bell. A real game guy, he has power. But I don't know if he can match up with Arthur Williams. The question is going to be how much does Arthur Williams, at 36 years of age, the former champion, have left? It may come down to that. Williams told us he thinks he has two years left. He says, I've never been a drinker i've never been a smoker i've always been in the ring i've always kept my body in shape we'll see how it pans out tonight well what a pace at the end of round one for kasim uma and verno phillips in his schedule 10 round junior middleweight fight you take a look at the punch numbers uma through 118 but the percentage according to copy box the same at 25 percent i give credit to the older phillips the Phillips, who may be a little shot worn, coming in here with a plan, trying to pick a spot. It's not staying right in front and making it too fast to pace. Trying to pick his spots with the younger Uma. And catching Uma, as you mentioned, at the end of the last round, in spots because Uma is staying in the middle a little bit too long with his offensive exchanges. Right there, you can see Uma standing up straight. A little bit. According to copy box in the fight against Tony Marshall, Uma landed 44% of his power shot. And right now he's digging in with some of his power here. Johnny Bumpus, the trainer of Uma, says that the thing with Kasim is to keep him focused. He's a young guy. He's only 22 years of age, a little brash. One of the things they worked on in training with Uma was to get him to step back a little bit. They felt against Marshall, if he stepped back a little bit, he would have been able to land more power shots, create some more space for himself. He just better be careful he doesn't step back from too close. He did that once already tonight. You can get caught that way. Get it, get it, get it. Don't be this 
I think about Uma. He doesn't throw one at a time. No, and he does not waste much, Bob. He gets himself with his feet, technically in good position before he throws, and he tries to make everything count. He gets caught standing in the middle straight up once in a while. And Phillips is just experienced enough to take advantage of that. Watch Phillips cover up, Bob. He'll cover up, and he's looking for a slot. He's looking for a spot to come with a punch at the right time if Uma stays in the middle too long. Once again, as we said earlier, Uma does not waste too much. Phillips looking to jump in. Uma looking to counter. Good action play through the first two. Grandma's cooking for her boys tonight. There won't be a dry skillet left in the house. To say, no thanks, Grandma, I'm full, is not an option. What beverage can see a man through this trial by kindness? That's right. Good to know there's also a light way to live. The high life. Well, I just sent some cash to my kid brother in Dallas. Yeah, for his new pizza place. He'll get it before you can say... Pepperoni. When loved ones need to send or receive cash, location really is everything. My mom's throwing a party in Philly for my dad's 75th, so I just sent some money to help out. I can't get there, but I know the cash will. Only Western Union has over 100,000 agent locations worldwide, so chances are there's one near you. I just picked up cash for an air conditioner. And getting here was no sweat. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. It's on ESPN2, presented by Miller High Life. And in part by Just For Men, more than a hair color, it's the Rejuvenator. Ends gray in five minutes, looks natural. And by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Hankinson, North Dakota, where you can find a lot of porn. And we're at the Dakota Magic Casino. Round number three underway, Kasim Uma in the red, the veteran Verno Phillips in the black trunks. Take a look at the punch numbers in round number two. Uma landed 23 of 74 power shots, and he threw 69 more punches total in the round. If Uma, the young, and I think promising, Talented Uma has a flaw. It is sometimes he'll stand up a little straight in front of his man. Back in 1997, Phillips knocked out Godfrey Niakana in the 11th round. Uma said Niakana was one of his idols from his homeland of Uganda. Says, I want to make amends. Good left hand there by the South Pole Uma. Staggered Phillips for a second. But sometimes the temperament of style, that's a plus for him of not wasting much, can maybe hold him back a little bit in the finishing department. We'll find that out. Because his temperament bothers to not waste much. Good straight left hand there by Uma. Goes to the body, back to the head. Well, he puts his punches in there to count Uma. And he got caught going straight back with the right hand. There's, Uma, there's Phillips again. Phillips can see the flaw in Uma. Can he get him? Now Uma making a little adjustment. Before he was in the mode to go forward, the aggressive mode. Now he's stepping out a little bit, taking what Phillips is giving him since Phillips is walking in. That's a smart fighter making a little adjustment like that. A smart young fighter, Mr. Uma. And Phillips is just waiting for that moment where he can unload that right hand to the head. You're right, Bob. We talked about that before. He's covering up, but he's taking right now. His plan is to try to come right back at the right time or the wrong time, as far as Uma's concerned. Catch Uma still punching. Catch Uma standing in the middle a little too long. And sometimes Uma leaves that left hand down. You see Phillips just trying to time that right cross or that right hook. 
one of the important things for any fighter, in this case, Uma, is to know how much time he has. He got caught ball back. How much time he has to throw and then to move before something comes back. Does he have time for one, two, three, or four punches? That decision is very important. Overall, round three has been a very good round for Kasim Uma. As the veteran Verno Phillips tries to land that one big right hand. When you have money problems, just going to the mailbox can be frightening. The bills and balances keep piling up. You're scared to even look. It's the same when the phone rings. You know it's another creditor, so you're afraid to answer. I don't know how my debt got so out of control. I thought bankruptcy was the only way out. And then I called Ameridad and found the answer. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. We're a nonprofit organization offering free consultations and solutions to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Now I don't have to struggle to keep up my monthly payments. And I won't spend the next 20 years paying off my credit card bills. Ameridad contacted my creditors. They were able to get my interest rates reduced. And my payments were almost cut in half. Now my balances are dropping. And I only have one small monthly payment. Call this number and in minutes, regardless of your situation, Ameridad can help change your financial future. Ameridad gave me my life back. Ameridad, helping America get out of debt. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Highlight from the Dakota Magic Casino in Hankinson, North Dakota. Round number four underway, Kasim Uma in the red, Verno Phillips in the black trunks, no knockdowns. Both guys are throwing a lot of power shots. Uma throwing over 117 punches in each of the first three rounds. That time he kept his left hand up, Teddy, and Uma blocked the right hand from Phillips. Yes, he did. He's learning, Uma. He knows that that right hand has become the punch of choice for his opponent, Phillips, which is the punch of choice for a lot of orthodox fighters when they're fighting a southpaw, that right hand. Johnny Bumpus, the trainer for Uma, said, throw the left and come back with the right. Johnny Bumpus, the former junior welterweight champion of the world. Both fighters in close, looking for the right punches, the right spot to throw. Watch how Uma will get underneath, cover up, and look to punch at the right time. right hand there by Phillips and it landed because Uma standing a little too straight up in front of his opponent again if Uma's going to improve in certain spots it's going to be not to do that stand straight up in front of his man when you're in that area get down low don't be tall be small but get your head on the side but do not stand up tall when you're in that danger zone right in front of your man in that punching area you could get all the way in get in good defensive position where you can work and not get caught or get all the way out Bob Phillips shoots a left hand to the body and he got a right hand in and again Uma standing straight up in that no man zone Overall, round four, the best round so far for Verno Phillips over the balance of the round. Question is, how much does he have in the tank at 31 and having a couple of long layoffs against the fit 22-year-old Uma? A man started pounding on our back door. My children were home alone. He almost got in. My oldest daughter pushed the Briggs panic button. The man stopped and ran away. In a world you can't always trust, there's one name you can. 
For over 135 years, Brinks has been protecting people and their valuables around the world. Now, this same trusted name can protect your family. Brinks introduces the Safe at Night Sale. Call toll-free 1-877-6-BRINKS now. And Brinks will install this standard monitored system for only $99. Incredibly, just $99. But there's more. Brinks will also install a second keypad, a $125 value, absolutely free. But you must call 1-877-6-BRINKS now. When it comes to the finest in home security, there's only one Brinks. Orthodox fighters like that right hand when fighting a southpaw. And that has become the punch of choice for Phillips. Phillips had a very solid round number four. The punch numbers will favor Uma in volume and connects, but take a look at the effective punches landed in the fourth round. You had to like Verno Phillips' performance. Uma winning the jab category, but Phillips is just looking to go with power shot. One thing to note is here is that Uma is not wasting much. He's being very efficient, very effective. What he throws, most of it lands. He's making Phillips work much harder to land his punches. He has to throw five, six, seven to land maybe two. Well, when Uma works, not much is missed. All right, to the corner of Kasim Uma, the aforementioned Johnny Bumpus, former champion. Johnny, uh, Kasim's fighting a good fight, but Phillips it seems to be able to get him a couple times. Is Kasim a little too relaxed on the defensive end? Well, yeah, I think a little bit. He's not doing what he's supposed to do after he just punches. He's got to either get around or get down. He started doing it the first round. I think he'll get back to it, though. I don't think this year's going to be able to take this to 10 rounds. I agree with you, Johnny. If, if, yeah, that's, that's beautiful right there. If Uma can keep up the pace, it's got to favor him with the older man in front of him. But the one thing that would concern me, I think you touched on it, is every once in a while Uma will stand up tall in front of his man. Exactly, exactly. Leave himself a little bit available. You must want him to correct that. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's got to start getting down and getting around. See, what I like to see him do is it's just like the last fight. Get in, bang, 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 bang. Step right back, let him come right back into it. Because that's what he's doing. He's waiting for him to punch. And then he's trying to counter. Hands high, baby. All right, punch Johnny, thanks chin. a lot. Johnny Bumpus in the corner of Kasim Uma. I think Phillips brings a little more pop, though, than Marshall did. Yes, he does. That's a good point, Bob. He definitely does. Marshall, a real warrior, but never had much hydro, much real atomic power in those hands. Phillips continues to try to time that right hand over Uma's left. Overall, this has been a better round five for Uma, Teddy. After round four, Phillips did a lot of good things. That's a good sign to the young fighter, how he responds after a tough round. Again, Uma standing straight up on the inside, leaving himself vulnerable in spots. It's almost like he get tagged with a combination. It's almost like Uma was waiting for the referee. Have you looked at your long distance bill lately? Wow. Are you kidding me? Ouch. That's gotta hurt. Sprint 500 anytime is the perfect way to keep your long distance bills under control. For just $25 a month, you get 500 minutes of state to state long distance you can use 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you're looking for a smarter long distance plan, Sprint 500 anytime is a slam dunk. To start lowering your bills, call 1 800 Pin Drop today. Take a look at this. Centuries underwater. It's such a thrill to restore these artifacts to their original beauty. And that's why new Crest White Strips are so great. In just two weeks, they restore your teeth to their original whiteness. It's a simple little strip. Just 30 minutes twice a day to whiten teeth ten times better. And it's so easy to wear. While I'm doing my thing, it's doing its thing. New Crest White Strips reveal your wider smile. Now, your first source for round-the-clock sports news is even better. The new ESPN News. A brand new look with the enhanced bottom line that's always on.
and lets you know what's ahead. Constant score updates and live in-game stats. Highlights, news conferences, analysis, and more. The new ESPN News is here. Well, we talked about Uma once in a while standing straight up and going straight back, and Phillips made him pay there, Bob. With all that said, Uma had a very good round number five. After a shaky round four, the fourth round was a good round for Phillips. Take a look at the numbers in round five. Phillips had the edge 27-21 in power connects. See a little adjustment once again from the young Uma. Starting the round, stepping back a little bit, trying to take what's being given to him by the oncoming Phillips. Pat Phillips coming in. Well, he's taking some leather from Phillips. He's starting to measure Phillips a little bit in spots with that left hand. Luminati, big time power guy. Has the nine knockouts in the 14 pro bouts, but his last knockout, May of last year. Phillips affected Uma that. Yep. Caught Uma standing straight up in front again. Stepped in at the right time. Take a look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard through five rounds, 49-47. For Uma, I have it 49-46, but it's a close 49-46. Teddy, of course, had his obligatory even round. The late part of this fight will tell how Phillips, the older Phillips, Phillips who's been around for 13 years and eight months, how he is able to hold up. Phillips got caught with a short right hand from Uma. Both guys have taken some big shots here in the sixth round. This is a good fight here, Bob. Everything you want, there's skill, there's heart, there's give and take. Uma's one problem, as I said, offensively is real good, doesn't waste much, always in good position. Sometimes he opposes every he punches. That's where Phillips, right there, has been coming on. They just prayed. What a round six. Attention, newly wed gal. Before you rush into a beer purchase, ask yourself this. What kind of man do you want? That's right. You want a high life man. An investment in the high life is an investment in your future. Barry Bonds takes his big home run show in the tiny Enron Field. Bonds chases baseball history as the search for 71 takes the Giants to homer-friendly Houston. Giants Astros at 8 on ESPN. Rangers A's at 10 on ESPN2. This week on Wednesday Night Baseball. USBA Super Middleweight Championship Fight. Thomas Tate versus Omar Sheikha. Friday Night Fight. 9 p.m. Friday on ESPN2. Oh. Slugfest in Dakota, North Dakota. Kasim Uma and Verno Phillips. Phillips in the black trunks. 31 years of age. Kasim Uma, the 22-year-old. 12-1-1, nine knockouts. Uma has been much busier as far as punches thrown. But Phillips has had his moments landing big shots. Take a look at the punches landed round by round according to CompuBot. Huge edge for Uma. But if you look at some of the effective punches being landed, even though Uma has the edge in every round with punches landed and punches thrown, there are rounds in here that definitely go Phillips' way. 
Again, what might tell a toll. As we come down the stretch, this tremendous fight is two things. One, the age of Phillips, the 13-year, eight-month career, what's on his old domino, and also how much harder he has to work to get somewhere compared to the younger Uma. Okay, we go to the corner of Verno Phillips and Trevor Whitman joins us. Trevor, Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. How are you doing? How are you? Verno doing great. seems to be very good at timing that right hand over the top. Very good with it, but he's got to stop backing up. He needs to go forward with him. Go forward with combinations. He's got to stop backing up with this guy, get his hands up while he's moving his head. I think we're going to get him in the later rounds because they're working the body very well. Combinations, B. You guys still there? Yes, we are. Okay. Do you want your man to step around Uma? A yes, bit? I, w I would love for him to use angles. Because okay. Uma, Uma's a guy that needs to be set to punch. Perfect, perfect. Yes, he did, does need to use, start using angles. Uh, uh, he needs to step on the foot, keep the guy from uh, pushing him backwards, keep his weight on his front leg. I think we're winning the inside game, definitely. Uh, uh, if he's working straight punches, definitely. He, uh, if he works straight punches, then hooks. We're looking for hooks every time. They keep him off balance when uh, Kasim Uma steps back. So if we stick on the inside, I think we're going to have this fight. Going to the later rounds, I think we're hurting him. So, Trevor, in the corner, we can expect to tell you, to hear you telling Phillips to move around, walk around. Perfect. Yes, you can hear me that, say that. All right, Trevor, best of luck. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks, All right. guys. Trevor Whitman doing a very good job with Verno Phillips. Good young trainer. Has done a good job here. And these two fighters have done a tremendous job. I think that might hurt Phillips a little bit. He's throwing these big punches, and he's putting himself off balance. You see Uma just shoot a little left hand to the body. I think Uma may be able to really just completely capture this fight if he could concentrate on the body now. Phillips is 31. He's had a couple of long layoffs. He said to stretch with talent, but Phillips is dead game. What a chin by Uma. He's taking some bombs. What a fight. Oh, baby. Well, we might be in North Dakota, but this is as big time as it gets. Let's listen in to Johnny Buckley. Combination there. The first two go in. Well, the third one will for Phillips. That is the benefit of combination punching. The two right there. Deep breath. Deep breath now. Deep breath. Deep breath. Another round like that. We got three more. Three more. Three more. And what a performance by Breno Phillips and Kasim Uma. We start round number eight. Any, for you people out there that are enjoying this great fight, pull your friends up. There's three rounds left. Come to tune in if they're not. This is a good one. Uma has the huge edge in punches thrown and punches landed. But Phillips has had a lot of effective punches landed. See the numbers through seven. Taking my hat off to Phillips. He can't hear the bag. 31 years old or not. Hasn't fought in 14 months. But before that, he had a two and a half year layoff. But I shouldn't be too surprised. There's a man who has fought for a former world champion. Good test for the young, very promising Uma. That Phillips turned pro when Uma was nine. The only mistakes Uma makes, I said it from the beginning, Bob, is stand a little straight up, take a picture once in a while after he punches, and sometimes step straight back. But he doesn't waste much. Take a look at Teddy's scorecard through seven. 
69-66, average 68-65 for Uma. Hey, it seemed to me that if Uma, you made the point in the last round, if Uma would throw body shots, might be able to slow down the older Phillips. Yeah, I think he may be, although he's doing some good work here, he must not stay in the middle too long because that's where Phillip has his moment. He'll come right back. And when Uma gets greedy, Bob, and stays there for five punches instead of four, he gets nailed. But as we started to say, as you just mentioned, I think that Uma's missing the boat a little bit by not going to that body more. Pushing Phillips downhill a little bit. But Phillips looked warm that last round. And he's been revived a little bit this round. The woman was concentrating on that body a little bit more. The ability of Phillips to revive himself might not be there. Left to the chin by Phillips. Uma answers back. Resistance becomes strength, becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. What a war between Kasim Uma and Verno Phillips. Round number nine underway, scheduled for ten. These are junior middleweights. No knockdown so far in the fight. But these guys have thrown a bevy of bombs through eight rounds. The corner of Phillips said, forget about going to the body, now go after Uma's head. A little slip there. See the numbers in round eight. Uma has had the edge in every round. Punches thrown, punches landed. But Phillips has had some rounds where he was very effective with the punches he landed. And that may, what you just said, make for some interesting scoring. Maybe even some controversial scoring. Low blow there, second of goal by Phillips. That's the second time he's been warned. The referee, Ed Obergon, said that's the second one. That's the second one. Fights past eight rounds. You see, Phillips has had many more. Uma had a 10 rounder in his last fight. Teddy, something you mentioned. If Uma does not win this fight, he is going to regret the fact that he did not concentrate on Phillips' body a little bit more. Yes, he will. And I think he should be concentrating on it right now. Because when he does miss, he only misses because Phillips is doing what any man would do when he's under attack, when he's under siege. He's moving his head. If Uma would go to the body, nothing would miss. If Uma, the body does not move. Uma scoring. Phillips trying to time that right hand. And missed with it. Got tagged. More off balance than anything else. And all right here is Uma picking his spots real nice. Again, does not raise much. Gets himself into George position. And right now he's taking care of defense as well as, well as offense. Big ninth round for 22-year-old Kasim Uma. And Phillips resting on the ropes. Looks like a body shot effective. That's what we called for, a body shot. 
Looks like it was right in the middle, right in the solar plex area. It's a very close fight. That's a knockdown right there. Plus, Uma is winning this round. So I don't think, uh, yeah, look at Phillips. He's really trying to protect his body, Teddy. Yes, he is. Uma should concentrate on that body. He concentrates on that body. He probably gets Phillips out of there. And, uh, I'll take one of those things. The Parisian mocha flake? Yeah. To you, it's a PC. But to your kids, it's a laboratory, a museum, or a rainforest. The Compact Presario 5000T with Intel Pentium 3 processor. It's a place where your child can explore a world of ideas. And it's just $779. To buy now, call 1-800-331-4120 and get a free compact printer and a free upgrade to Windows XP Home Edition. Hey, why just take your kids to school when you can take them farther than they ever dreamed? I want $50,000 in cash and a cold beer now. In the movies, it doesn't look like it hurts, but that hurts. You can tell a lot about a woman by her undies. I'm not wearing any, so if you want to know something, I'll ask. Hmm? Don't look now, but I think we're being followed. I say don't look now, and what's the very first thing you do? You look. Tell me your crutch is vibrating. Thieves. Friday, September 21st on ABC. Here's the effect of that body shot. It doesn't have to be hard. All it has to do is be clean. And that was a clean left hand around the loop area. Cleaning up some ice in the corner of Uma. Verno Phillips coming off a 14-month layoff. Done a fantastic job. Uma getting that left glove retaped. Key moment, though, in round number nine. Uma finally concentrated on the body attack. And Phillips went down. A knockdown was scored, plus Uma controlled the round. 10-8 for Uma, big in the scoring. I said I like this Uma, I like both these guys, no doubt about it, but the skills, the ability, the use of Uma, but you gotta love his attitude. He's got a real fighter's attitude, and he's in there with a guy with a real fighter's attitude. Well, if Uma wins this fight, he continues on his track. And Verno Phillips has put himself back in some paydays, win, lose, or draw at this point. Yes, he has. That's a good point there, Bob. Because he definitely has some fight left in him. His phone will ring. Now Phillips goes southpaw. I think right now, Uma should be doing two things, nothing else. Get in close, go to that body, and throw uppercuts. No other punches should exist in the arsenal right now to the end for Uma. The body shots, we already know why. The body shot the round before that effect of that punch. Everybody saw that on Phillips. Also, the uppercuts. Phillips is leaning forward on the inside now. Almost looks like Phillips is keeping his hands lower to protect against the body shot. And you're right, he is. Look at Uma, very patient. The only deviation from what I said that I thought he should do, what I suggested is maybe Uma could fake something to the body, take advantage of what you just mentioned, Phillips dropping his hands, and then go up top. Catch Phillips with his hands down. That's how you set up an explosive fight ending punch. Okay, Tommy Hearns did it with the great Roberto Duran. Take the left to the body, right hand to the head. And Phillips is, is trying to sucker Uma in so he could maybe drop time a big shot. Well, there's spots that are there for that, and Phillips knows where those spots are. It's while Uma's punching. Sometimes Uma, as we said from the beginning, will stay there a little too long. But right now, the youth, the strength of Uma has taken control. The 
Phillips body and uppercuts again. It's there. Just look. Watch Phillips on the inside, how he leans forward. Folks, if you just tuned in, this has been going on for 10 rounds. Phillips trying to hold on there. Bernal just about out of gas at this point. Plenty of hard Phillips and so Look at that hard. Oh, boy. And Uma staying right in there with him. What a fight. Bernal Phillips and Kasim Uma in a 10-round slugfest. Phillips thinks he's a winner, so does Uma. We'll get the judges' cards after this timeout. Someday I'm going to be a movie star. But until I get discovered, my dad helps me out from Miami. He sends money through Western Union. When you need to send or receive money, millions rely on Western Union. When my sister in Manila needed surgery, flying there was out of the question, but sending money wasn't. Only Western Union can send money to over 100,000 agent locations in 180 countries with a money-back guarantee. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. My new book shows you 15,000 government programs you could use to change your life, too. You can get a better job, get an education, or start your own business. Next year, the government's going to spend $350 billion, and those who know about the programs are the ones who get the money. If I could get $15,000 to go back to school, any woman could do it. Call now, 1-800-233-0500. Tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN's two-minute drill finals, followed by the Nike U.S. Women's Cup as Japan faces the USA and Sports Center at 11. On ESPN2, RPM Tonight and NFL Tonight at their new time, 6 and 6.30, and later Sports Century Profiles controversial linebacker Ray Lewis. And on ESPN Classic, a tribute to Reuben Hurricane Carter with a Sports Century Profile and then two of his greatest fights. And catch the new 24-hour ESPN News. Friday Night Fights on ESPN2 is presented by Miller High Life and in part by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide, and by Sports Center. Which sports center do you watch? The sights of Hankinson, North Dakota, but no bull. This was some fight between Kasim Uma and Verno Phillips. Uma averaged 131 punches thrown per round. He landed 310 of 848. He dropped Phillips in the critical round nine with a body shot. Phillips 190 of 759. Teddy Atlas's scorecard reads as follows. 98, 93 for Uma. I had it 97, 92 for Uma. Now for the judges' scorecards, our ring announcer, Jeff Connor. Round of applause for these gladiators. What a fight. What a night. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Ballard scores at 96-93. Judge Wolski, 97-93. Judge Cunningham, 95-94. For the winner, out of the red corner, Kasim the Dream Omar! He doesn't even look tired, Teddy. He's a tremendous physical specialist. And mentally, he has the attitude you want in a fighter. Hey, after all, after what's happened in his life, what could be tough? Defected from Uganda after being abducted into the army at the age of seven. His nickname is The Dream. Defecting to the U.S. in 1998, and he is truly living an American dream. He is now 13-1-1, one one, an impressive win against Bernard Phillips, who should get more paydays after his performance as well. Well, tonight's card being promoted by Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray Leonard Productions. And, of course, coming up on the 20-year anniversary of one of the great bouts, a classic, Leonard and Hearns. And yesterday, Sugar Ray Leonard sat down and talked about that epic battle with the hitman. The earlier rounds were very important to me because I was trying to dictate the tempo of the fight, dictate the pace of the fight. And I did quite a bit of moving. And the reason I was moving was also to lose some time behind up, to not let him react to every movement, every hit that I made. 
But the unfortunate thing about it, the jabs that he was landing were starting to damage my left eye, which was already damaged in cranium. But six and seven, I started to put together combinations to the bite and to the head. And I recalled that I threw a right hand, I ducked, and came back with the left hook. And that punch hurt Tommy. And I was quite surprised that I was able to hurt him. Uh, and uh, he backed away, he wobbled. And I just had just a, another uh, burst of energy, burst of strength, adrenaline. And I went on the attack to his body and to his head. The later rounds, I found myself chasing Tommy Hearns. And I was totally fatigued. I was so exhausted. My legs and lungs were burning. And I was just, just gasping for breath. And Tommy was, was evading me. And he was using his left jab. He was staying away from me. He would come in. He, was, he would hit me every now and then with a jab and then a right hand. It was very frustrating for me because I was just that close to him, but I never could make contact with him. I swear, I never gave up. I never thought that it was, it was over for me. I always believed that I could come on strong in one round or another. I never gave up, although it was just so, it was just so difficult trying to land that punch on him. When I got back to the corner at the end of round 12, Angelo said something to me. You're blowing it now, son. You're blowing it. He just activated something. Some kind of power in me. A reserve. During round 13, I knew again. I felt that it was over. I felt that that was my time to put Tommy away for good. Somehow, some miraculous way, some, some gift that he had, enabled him to survive. I, I just couldn't believe it because, again, I was totally exhausted. I was so spent, so, so fatigued, dehydrated, that it was just a matter of me wanting just a little bit more than he did. The 14th round, I ran out there straight towards him for a vicious shot to the body because I wanted to end the fight that round. Once I got him against the ropes, and I, I recall throwing a body shot, a body shot, a left hook, and the right hand, and David, David Pearl jumped in. I was elated. But if you notice, when my guys grabbed me, I was like a wet leaf. I had nothing left at that point. Some 20 years later, I see that fight as a defining moment that propelled Tommy Hearns and myself to be respected the boxing industry. That fight redefined both of us. Sugar Ray Leonard, one of those moments you remember where you were. I was a senior in high school. My dad took me to the Meadowlands Racetrack to watch it on closed circuit. I remember watching that. What a classic. Max is standing by with David Lloyd as we send it back to the studio. David, I have to say this. We'll be back with the main event in a skosh. Oh, very good, Bob. I do appreciate that. It's always fun to watch those Leonard Hearn highlights well, that was 20 years ago. All things considered, the build-up to the fight, how the fight, the shift in momentum, the boxer turning slugger, Leonard going in as the boxer, winding up the slugger, Hearns out boxing the slugger. One of the greatest fights of all time, especially going in, trying to figure out who's going to win that fight. I was seven or eight years old at the time. <laughs> Now, the early fight was not one of the greatest fights of all time, but that was a heck of a fight between Uma and Phillips. It certainly was. It was almost like a uh, kind of a, uh, a poor man's, not a poverty-stricken man, just maybe a uh, working-class man, right. Mickey Ward and Emmanuel Burton that we had on a couple of weeks ago. Tremendous fight from both guys. You know, Uma's the kind of guy, sometimes you're watching a fight, and you say, you're watching a fighter, a winning fighter, you've seen him a couple times, but he doesn't really give you a reason to watch. There's nothing so compelling about him. When Uma fights, I take notice. He is a, he's a guy who is compelling. Yeah, there are things he can do better. He can finish guys better. You know, he lets guys off the hook, and consequently, they wind up in positions where maybe they could hurt him later in the fight. But, uh, so there are things he can improve, but he's a compelling guy to watch, and I look forward to seeing him every time. You know, when I took this assignment, I was led to believe this man was infallible. He's absolutely perfect. And in the first nine seconds of the show, he makes a mistake. So what is it now with Williams and Mayfield? Well, I said that Imamu Mayfield beat... Arthur Williams for the title on our air. Sometimes I get my wires crossed. I used to hate to see commentators do that when I was a kid. No, idiot, you got it wrong. Of course, it was Arthur Williams who knocked out Amamu Mayfield for the Cruiserweight title here on Friday Night Fights. We'll give you the mulligan on that one. The mulligan. Let's, let's talk about Francisco Bajardo. This guy has not made any mistakes so far in his career. Seven fights, seven knockouts, are, uh, just dismantling this guy, Jesse 
Varela the yeah. other night. You know, the, the funny thing is, and this didn't make air, but, and you know, you're going to see it here now. Bajado, usually the guy who you most want to see in boxing is not the best prospect in boxing. In other words, usually there's a guy who's, who's going to go on to have the most success on the one hand, the Roy Jones, let's say, okay. and then there's the De La Hoya who's being built and marketed and, the, and more action-packed than the guy you want to see. Bajado is those guys combined. He's the guy who not only do you want to see more than anyone else, but he may in fact go on to have the most successful professional career of all of these young up-and-coming fighters who just recently turned pro. Bajado is really the future of boxing at this point. How, how, what kind of a weight do you think this guy is going to fight at? Do you think he's at his level right now? He just turned 18. Well, you have Koto and Williams in the same division as Bajado. They're all 135 pounds. If they move up in weight, you hope that they do it together so that they can eventually meet and the, the top fighters and they can fight each other either at 135 or 140. Of course, it's, it's hard to tell. Bajado is very young. Any weight this guy fights at, he's going to be effective. The only questions we have, heart, chin, will to win, how will he respond to adversity, and only time will tell those. But in terms of purely physical aspects of his game, in terms of his physical talent, he's extremely talented, hard puncher, fast hands, great killer instinct, and uh, in terms of his skills, very, very sharp, especially for a guy with such little professional experience so far. I'm guessing you're up on the guy. Yeah, Bob. All right. It's now time for our classic KO. This one brought to you by Tommy Morrison. Tommy, take it away. He's also getting blocked by that Morrison left hand. But you know what? Harry Terrell has read the nose of Morrison. He's landing some punches, but he just is absorbing too many power shots from Morrison. Well, those 38 years may come into play in a hurry at 227 pounds. They're right. Classic KO is brought to you by Miller High Life. Wow, that man was in his own private Idaho there. Yeah, of course, Morrison, right, looking for the left, usually looking for that left hook, had a very good left hook. People forget, Morrison, yeah, he was devastated by Ray Mercer, didn't have a great chin, didn't have great stamina. Morrison was good enough to outbox and beat George Foreman before George Foreman beat Michael Moore for the heavyweight title. So it was a Foreman who still, of course, he was older, far, 20 years removed from his prime. But this is before Foreman re-won the title. Morrison beat him on points. Morrison also had great action fight with Carl the Truth Williams and was a, a colorful contender, so to speak, for a couple of years. Muhammad Ali used to say about Jerry Quarry in the heavyweight division, a little white equals a lot of green. <laughs> That's a truism we believe here in boxing. And now, let's promote uh, ESPN Classic. And we talk about Reuben Hurricane Carter. They wrote a book about him and a movie. Bob Dylan wrote a song about the guy. Now it's your chance to see what the hurricane was like as a fighter. His 62 battle with Holly Mims, and then a great fight in 1963 against Gomeo Brennan. It is Tuesday night, 9 Eastern time on ESPN Carter Classic. Was excellent middleweight. He certainly was. Coming up, the most outstanding boxer from the 96 Olympics taking on those guys, that was Julian Letterlow and Vashley Jirov. We'll talk that next.